Welcome back! This is episode 2 of my series of Black Ops Guides. We're going over another weapon, the infamous and very popular AK-74U. The AK-74U is classified as a submachine gun, unlocked at level 17. Like most guns, it can be purchased for 2,000 COD points. It returns from Call of Duty 4 and operates similarly the same way. Many of the AK-74U's traits combine the power and controllability of an assault rifle with the mobility of an SMG, making it very popular online. The AK-74U is a short-barreled carbine variant of the AK-74 assault rifle. The U at the end of the gun's name stands for Yukolacheny, which is Russian for shortened. It is labeled incorrectly in-game as a submachine gun, but this is most likely due to the AK-74U being closely akin to one, and the fact that there is no middle ground classification between assault rifles and SMGs. The AK-74U was designed by Mikhail Kalashnikov in 1979 in the now collapsed Soviet Union, which is now the present day Russian Federation. Currently it is being produced by Izhevsk Mechanical Works in Russia. It entered service in the Soviet Union in 1979 for use by special forces, airborne units, and tank crews. Like its bigger brother, the AK-74 assault rifle, it fires the barbarously deadly 5.45 by 39 mm round. Today, it is fielded as a favorite among special forces, marines, and naval infantrymen across several countries in Eurasia, including Russia, Ukraine, and Poland. The AK-74U is one of three high-damage SMGs in the game, on par with the MP5K in terms of it. The damage range drop-off length is the same as all of the guns in its class, with the exception of the Scorpion. However, the damage measure over range is rather peculiar. The AK-74U delivers three shot kills at close to close medium range, five at medium range, and still five at long range. This shows that the drop-off is quite quick, which is to be expected with a submachine gun. However, five shots to kill is quite a lot, so this drastically limits the gun's range. One huge advantage this gun has, though, is that the silencer does not reduce the damage over range effectiveness up close. Or far away. It houses a 30 round magazine, 45 with the extended magazine's attachment. Without Scavenger Pro, it comes with 90 rounds of extra ammunition, basically giving you three extra magazines when not extended. This lack in starting ammo can be a nuisance, but it is easily compensated for with scavenger or dual mags. Also, the AK-74U is quite popular, so you can also pick up ammunition from the ground. The AK-74U takes 2.1 seconds to reload and roughly 3 seconds to reload when unloaded. This is pretty fast for an SMG, so sleight of hand isn't very necessary. The gun has a moderate rate of fire of 750 rounds per minute and fires in fully automatic. The recoil is a tad bit finicky and unpredictable, but moderate. If you're thrown off easily by it, the grip easily negates this. The iron sights are quite clear, so optics attachments aren't very necessary. Like all of the SMGs, it boasts a fast aim down sight speed. The first attachment for the AK-74U was extended magazines. This increases the gun's capacity from 30 rounds to 45 rounds. To be quite frank, it's not very necessary with this gun. You'll rarely find yourself in a situation where you're engaging enemies to the point where you need it. It's not totally useless, but if it's just outweighed by other attachments in terms of practicality. Dual magazines are very useful with the AK-74U since it does not come with much starting ammunition. You can easily negate this without having to sacrifice your first perk slot for scavenger. The reloading factor doesn't really make a difference since the AK reloads quite quickly, but it's a big plus. The ACOG isn't totally unnecessary, but one of the AK-74U's advantages is fast aim down sight speed, and the ACOG takes this away. The zoom is okay, but you shouldn't be trying to use the AK-74U at long ranges in the first place, so it does more harm than good. The ACOG scope will also reduce the gun's close range capabilities, which is where the AK-74U excels. The red dot sight is pretty useful, but I prefer other attachments over it. 
Albeit it looks pretty cool, and the iron sights are really good in the AK-74U. And you'll find it hard to be precise with them in the first place. The same goes for the reflex sight. If you want to use the optics, I'd recommend using the red dot sight because of aesthetics. The grip is the most commonly used attachment on this gun, and rightfully so. The grip lessens the recoil of the gun by quite a bit, as seen in the spread test earlier in this video. It makes quite a difference, and goes well with scavenger. The suppressor has a unique characteristic to it. When the AK-74U is equipped with a suppressor, the damage drop-off is not effective. The advantages of this are obvious. However, you may find yourself in a bind if you run out of ammo. I suggest using Warlord with dual max to remedy this. Enemy spy plane above. One inter interesting thing about the AK-74U is that it's the only submachine gun in game that can be equipped with a grenade launcher. It operates just as you'd expect it. I'm a bit torn about the rapid fire attachment. It makes kill times a breeze, but the recoil is more prominent. You can use Warlord to easily balance this out. All in all, it's a pretty useful attachment considering the AK-74U is poor at long range, and this increases its effectiveness up close. The real downer about the AK-74U is that there aren't very many playing styles that work well with it. Lightweight suits the running gun style of play that this gun suits. However, you may want to use dual mags, since you won't have Scavenger to help you out when you run out. Scavenger remedies the ammo problem with the AK-74U, and is extremely useful with this gun if you don't want to use dual mags. Ghost goes with a suppressor. But, if you want to use a suppressor, you need to consider swapping out your second tier perk slot for Warlord so you can swap on dual mags. Flak jacking can come in handy, but you'll find it won't help you as much as the other perks. Hardline is as you'd expect. In my opinion, it doesn't fit this gun very well compared to others. Hardened can be helpful, but the AK-74U is better suited with other perks. It's an SMG, not a support weapon. Scout is self-explanatory. Steady Aim and Steady Aim Pro are arguably the best attachments to use with the AK-74U, as you won't have to aim down your sights as much and deal with the recoil in some cases. Sleight of Hand isn't very useful with the AK-74U, since its reload time is already pretty fast. Finally, Warlord comes down to personal preference and attachments. I found Tactical Mask and Tactical Mask Pro to be useful with the AK-74U, since I like using flashbangs with a setup like this. The pro version of this perks like you keep moving without having to stop and slow down and look around for your stunned foes that may be able to counterattack within that time. Marathon and Lightweight go together like peanut butter and jelly. Ninja is pretty useful on a moving kit, so if you want to use it, go right ahead, but to be honest, I think you'll find the other perks much better. Second Chance, in comparison, isn't very useful to the other perks. Hacker increases your situational awareness of enemy hiding spots and claymores, so it can help you keep moving, too. The AK-74U is a rock-solid and straightforward gun, with the mobility and handling of an SMG, and power and controllability similar to an assault rifle. The AK-74U is an effective killing machine. However, its low ammo count and lack of playing styles don't make it a very versatile weapon compared to other guns in the same class, unless you have rapid fire. You'll be beaten by other SMGs and shotguns at close and sometimes close medium range if you don't get your act together very quickly when spotted. The AK-74U is a common gun in the game, and for good reason. Some may call it overpowered, but in all honesty, it really isn't. If you do piss off a couple people, that's just flat out funny. Thanks for watching this guide. Keep in tune for more maps, weapons, game types, and a boatload of other stuff to come. While I'm at it, I'd like to thank Xbox Ahoy for letting me make these guides along with several people that are doing this. Please go check this guy out at his YouTube channel. He's been doing this way longer than I have. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on the battlefield.